Lawsubit's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. It is Monday the 9th of October and I'm back again today to do a quick tutorial of the fabric pumpkins as you see right here. Um, I'm going to show you what you need. To start off with, you are going to need around a half yard of fabric. I chose this fabric here. Um, you're going to have leftover. That's okay. You may be able to get by with a quarter Link, um, quarter yard of fabric, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. So this is the fabric. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a sponge, um, a sponge brush, Mod Podge, a pumpkin. Whatever size you want is really going to dictate how much how much fabric you need. But you're going to need a pumpkin and a floral pick. This is actually one floral pick. And I took it apart, took all of the fabric tape, I mean the fabric, the floral tape off of it so that I would have individual picks. So I'm going to sit down and we're going to get started. I've already worked on this a little, little this morning. Um, as you can see, you're going to start off when you have just the plain pumpkin, you're going to start off by pulling out the stem. So you need to make sure when you're pulling it out, you're doing it gently. You're just kind of twisting gently, tugging a little. Because as you can see, there's teeth here. And if you pull it out, yank it, you're going to get a chunk of your pumpkin along with it. Because this is just foam. So be gentle, wiggle, twist like you would um, the stem off of an apple. Uh, that's what you're going to need to do. But you're going to leave that out. And then you're going to put down a piece, I found that wax paper works really well, so put down a piece of wax paper um, to apply the Mod Podge to your strips. Now you could get fancy and you can get your you know, rotary cutter and your cutting mat out to do this, but I didn't find it was necessary. You can see how uneven my cutting line is. I cut the strips. And I would recommend doing about a, um, an inch wide to an inch and a half. You've got to remember, your pumpkin is not perfectly round. Why does your strips have to be? There's lots of dents. I don't know if you can see this here. Bumps, ridges. And you're not going to be able to do a straight line, just like you see here. So you start cutting off your strips with your scissors. And they're going to look like this. So this is... Um, what I ended up doing was taking a piece of jute twine, you could use anything really, even a cloth measuring tape, and I measured from the tip or the hole where the stem was of the pumpkin, down the ridge, and I did the, the um, outer bump, not the inner bump, because of course that's a wider surface almost to the tip, but not exactly to the tip. And that is because you're going to have many pieces overlapping here. Um, so the less fabric here, the better. And then that is how long I cut my strips. So just a simple measuring technique. And I put this to the side because I may use it on the top. Once I got the strips cut, I went back through and I cut those strips into tips like this. And these are not Ginger scissors. And so, of course, that gave me a strip with points on both ends. I'm just going to put these to the side and kind of get going with it. So I opened up my Mod Podge. Once again, you can get a paper plate or a small cup and pour the Mod Podge in. I just dip straight from the Mod Podge. This is what it looks like. It's, kind of, it's, it's, it's a glue, um, a binder. And it's thin. It's thinner than Elmer's glue. It smells like the glue paste we used in kindergarten as children. But anyway, just apply it to your strip. Once again, you don't have to get fancy. Don't be too liberal with it. Um, because you're going to put more on it when you get it on the pumpkin. To... Hold it down. And when you apply it here, I hope you can see that. Let me take a look. Yeah. You want to get as close as you can to this hole, but not in it. 
And the reason is you've got to put the stem back in there. So you don't want to fill this hole with glue, fabric, and all that. So get as close as you can without going in. And don't worry, you can see, you can here where I've already been, you can see part of the pumpkin. Don't worry about that because if you're going to use picks on top, you're going to cover that up. So close as you can get and come down like this overlapping the last one just a little bit and you're going to press down into the ridge and kind of straighten and it's like you're ironing with this glue so you're going to rub and push that down into the grooves here as well make sure you get the edges and that's it and see it's not perfectly into the center here it's okay the next piece can cover up that so then you just keep going and as you can see I did this maybe 30 minutes ago and see how it looks here from what I just did it's already drying and there are some spots that is not completely dry and that's where maybe I used a little more of the Mod Podge than I should have. That's why I say uh, don't be too generous with it. Um, you know, I mean, you want to keep it as thin as you can but still get the desired effect. So then push this down. I like to use the edge of this because there's like a plastic um, piece inside uh, that works really well in getting in these ridges. And and then up against the other edge and down on the bottom. See how easy this can go? Um, like I said, I think I maybe worked on it earlier this morning, maybe 30 minutes and two depending on the width of your strips you can go a little quicker bigger strips you're going to cover more surface area um, and also i was thinking today while doing this you don't necessarily have to do strips um, wouldn't it be cool to have like a patchwork pumpkin using squares or just scraps of fabric they're all going to be overlapping so it really doesn't matter um, how they look once they get on there as long as you've got them smoothed out and see right here you've got a wrinkle you can just gently pull this back up and rearrange it and be careful when you do that when you pull one from the bottom you've already kind of laid down if you're not careful in pulling it up you're going to pull up one or two to the side um, or to the wise I've done it so so there you go. That's it. And I will tell you this Mod Podge gets all over you. I mean, you see it all in my fingertips. Um, it sticks really good. You're going to need something to um, scrub all of that excess Mod Podge off your hands when you're done. Um, I recommend a sugar scrub from Rags to Stitches USA. <laughs> we made that one night at a craft night about a month ago. Um, Lorraine had us make it and when we made these pumpkins, the only thing that would get all that mod, excess Mod Podge off of our hands was Lorraine's sugar scrub. So Now see, I think I've got a little too much Mod Podge here. But just kind of swipe off as much as you can. We've got all the uh, wrinkles out and just keep going. Also, you don't have to use picks on the top. You could use ribbons, um, bows, flowers. Uh, I chose the pick because Number one, it was relatively cheap. I think it was like $1.99 for that pick. Um, and of course, ribbon's gonna cost a little more, but 
but it's all in what you want. I also have some moss, some Spanish moss left over, but all of you have nuts and things that are dropping in the yard right now, and why can't you use some of those? Use acorns or, um, but you, I, I think you know what I'm saying. You, you can use what's on hand. There's a lot of things out in the, in the, the forest or the woods around our homes to help us with covering the top. And so, just hold that in place. And I think Marlene had asked me about the bottom of the pumpkin and how it looks. You can see here that the pumpkin is indented and you know it's made that way. And with even with these overlapping pieces of fabric, it is not causing a bump down here. Uh, someone else asked if I had put anything on the bottom, um, like a circular felt piece or something, to cover up where everything meets. And no, I didn't. It looks just like this. I didn't think it was necessary. Um, the only one that's going to pick up and look at the bottom is someone that's going to craft one themselves. So it's only going to be out a couple months of the year. Um, and it's just for beauty. But like I said, no one's going to look at the bottom. So I wouldn't be concerned about that. And right now I'm doing two at the time. Two strips at the time. I think that's about the maximum I would do at the time because that Mod Podge um, doesn't dry really quickly, but it dries quickly enough. I starts to become tacky feeling. So, all right. And you see earlier where I had the big gap in the bottom with the piece that did not meet up. It's covered. Like I said, it's it's. Perfection doesn't work here because this is not a perfect situation with this fabric and this pumpkin. Looks like we're only going to have one more. So again, doing the sides, the top. These applicators, I can't imagine a brush, like a paintbrush, doing as, as well of a job as this. So that's why I use this. And like I said, that plastic piece inside works really well with pushing down those edges and getting out creases. I know you hear that chatter. That's um, Jacob and my husband talking. We're leaving here shortly to take him to do the rest of his paperwork for uh, the military. So I wanted to get this done before we leave. And once again, down in the center, covering up, just give it a once over, make sure there's no, oh, see right here, I've got a piece of pumpkin showing, so I'm gonna cover that up. And even though that's a spot I did before, just know too that as the Mod Podge dries, it's gonna, the fabric's gonna shrink up just a tad. Just, Hold on just a minute. All right. So here I want to cover this up. Oh, and I need to put some more Mod Podge there. Now look at me. Okay, so down here and down here. All right. And then we're going to recover that to cover up the miss, the um, issue from earlier. And push down those new edges. Oh, and see where I'm already pulling off? You have to be real careful with um, two in the areas you've already done is picking the fabric up with your fingers as you move it. So I would recommend maybe doing a quarter side, uh, letting it dry, come back doing another quarter. So as you handle it, like I just did, it picked up this piece of fabric. Um, but that's it, so it, it is done. Um, 
The only thing left to do would be to add any picks, and I will say on my others, um, someone may disagree with the way I did it, but I used the tackiness of the Mod Podge that was already there and added a tiny bit more to put my picks on the top to help hold them in place. And you see, they're fine. So I have this moss. And some of you that are down in the Georgia and South Carolina low countries, you can find this readily. But And this makes a big mess. <laughs> so I just take this and pull this apart like this. There's a twig. I want that out of there. And it's going to drape the way it wants to. So I'll just put this on the top. And then choose a couple of the picks that I know I want to use. And I want to um, match. You have the berries here in the fabric and the green. And I actually use the hole, the stem hole, to help with that. But these are not my fabric scissors, so don't worry. Um, I'm going to bend it and put it right at the edge along with these. I'm going to have a couple more leaves. And I'm doing this one for my daughter Jordan. I know she's going to love it. Um, she's good with this stuff too, but she seems to think she's not. So she doesn't always... Um, she likes her mama to do it for her. So you've got that. And I'm going to put some of the berries. Maybe the acorn. I like the acorn better. I mean, the acorn. The uh, pine cone better. And then I'm just going to push this down. And as I said, I'm using the Mod Podge that's still tacky as well as the vine to hold that in. And so this is the pumpkin. So you can just play with everything, adjust it how you want it, um, spread things around, add something more, take something off. It's all up to you. I hope you used this tutorial and that you enjoyed it. Um, if you do decide to make one this weekend, be sure to, to post it on Instagram and tag me. I'd love to see it. Have a great day. See you next weekend. Bye-bye.